I want to talk about caching data locally. So let's say that I'm making some fetch calls to the server. I'm getting some data back. I've got a very basic PHP page. What it does is it creates this little JSON file. It's got three properties, time, key, and people. Key, we're just saying it represents some sort of API key. It's just a number I made up. Time is the actual timestamp. And people is an array that randomly has different names inside of it. So every time I call it, the timestamp changes and the list of names changes. It's three different names each time. So some very basic data. Now what I want to do is I want to have a web page that makes calls to this, whether it's when I click on something on the page or it's running in the background every so often. It's making a fetch to this API. The API is returning some data to me and I want to cache that. I want to take that list of names and save it. So how do I do that? How do I keep it up to date? Well, let's take a look. So I have a uh, basic page here, this page. Um, there's a heading that I'm going to add a click listener to. There's an output div that I'm going to write whether or not, hey, okay, I've created the data. I've updated the data. Um, that's about it, I guess. Um, so my init function I'm finding my h1, I'm adding the click listener, I'm going to call this function fet data. Alternatively, or additionally, I can create a set interval that's going to run every so often. Now I've got this set to run every 20 seconds, which is very frequent. Um, I would probably bump this up. This is 20 every 20 seconds. Uh, set intervals looking for number of milliseconds, so multiply by a thousand the number of seconds that you want. And that's what you're going to get. So if I said 120, that's once every two minutes. Now, when you're picking your time, think about the kind of data you're getting. Think about how often it's going to change. Think about the fact that you are forcing the person's browser to make calls. So you're using their data and you're using your data on the API side. So you probably don't want to do something once every 10 seconds. Um, if it's data that's really, really critical, okay, maybe. But most data, probably not going to have to update it that frequently. So just bear that in mind when you're doing this. So I've got both these things working. I'm going to have a click listener and I'm going to have this set interval that once every 20 seconds, it's going to call this function. Now I've already got the basic function set up. I've got a URL. This is my PHP page. I'm appending this API key onto it as part of the query string. Nothing to do with the functionality that we're doing here. I'm just showing that, okay, I'm pretending I'm calling an API and I'm passing an API key up to this thing. Uh, I could delete this. It wouldn't change this page one bit. Just part of the simulation. Then I do a fetch call. I'm fetching this URL. The response comes back. I'm converting it into a JSON object from the string that comes back. And then from that data, the data that comes back here, if I zoom in, I've got a property called time. I need to get this one. So data.time and then the array down here, this one is called data.people. Now you will see duplicate names showing up here. I'm not doing any sort of checks to eliminate that in my data. I'm just randomly grabbing three names. And output, that is my div right here underneath the h1. All right, so how do I do this? Well, I need to do a little bit of planning. I need to think about local storage. That's what I'm going to use as my caching mechanism. I want to take those names and I want to save them in local storage. And I also want to save the time. Now I can save both things in the same key or I can create two separate keys. For simplicity's sake in this one I'm going to create two different keys. I'm going to create one key called Westeros time. That's going to be the timestamp and Westeros people is going to be the array of names. All right, so we need to check and see, first of all, does the key exist? If the key does not exist for the time, it means we've never set it before. So we're just going to go ahead and throw the names inside there. Let's get that time. So um, I'll create a variable called old time. We're going to go to local storage, get item, and we're going to create something called Westeros time. There we are. Now, if that comes back with undefined, it means that there's nothing inside of here. So I do if old time. 
we've got data. Otherwise, we don't. And if we don't, then we're going to create the data for the first time. So let us do that. Local storage, set item, Westeros time, and we're going to put our data.time in there as the value. Cool. Now I also want to put the people. Let's just keep it short. Westeros people and Pete. Now we have a problem here. I can't just put this directly in. This is an array. This is an actual JavaScript array. I cannot put that in there. Local storage only accepts strings. So we need to convert it. JSON.stringify. And we'll pass that inside of here. Now, PS, this is the string version of the people that we can put inside there. And then we'll write our message out to the output div. So we'll set the text content into list created. All right, so we save that, refresh. Now, I haven't clicked here, but within the next 20 seconds, we should see the stuff appear over here. Now, if we have the data, then we want to take the old time and we want to convert it into an actual number so we can work with it. So let's do this. And there we go. There's the list showing up. So there's our timestamp. And there are the names. Cool. So int old time is going to be the parse int version of old time. OK. Now, we have the data. Now, I could just repeat this. I could just say, fine, we're going to update it. And I will take these things and do this and say list updated. Now, if I do that, we've got data inside of here. It's saved in local storage. And then within the next 20 seconds, it's going to update that list. But that means it's always going to update it. What if my caching time that I wanted to use was an hour? Well, this is running every 20 seconds, so it's going to be running at three times a minute, so it's 180 times in the hour. I don't want to do it that frequently. So we need to check. Let's create a variable. Let's create a global variable here. Const. We'll create something called data timeout. This is how many seconds we want to save our data. Well, let's say we're going to save it for 30 seconds. This is how long we want our data for it. Now, this is a very short period of time. So this got updated again. This is a very short period of time. Um, and list updated the message there. So we're going to do this. We're going to say if the old time plus the actually sorry that should be all in caps this is a constant data timeout so yep yeah, right here if these two things together if i add those two together that is less than the current timeout uh, the current timestamp rather so this one right here, the one that just came back from the server, that's the one that we're looking at. All right, so how does this work? This is the old time right here, the one that's saved inside of local storage. And we're taking this number and we're adding to it this 30. So we're saying, OK, this plus 30 seconds in the future, that's the oldest that we want to keep this data. So if that is less than the new time that just came back from the server, now we're going to do the update. And that's what we're going to do this, like that. There we are. So this thing is going to be running. Let's refresh this. OK, so the create worked. We knew that. But if we have the data, 
So we do have the data right here. We've got this list of three names. We know that once every 20 seconds, there's a call being made. The first 20 seconds, it's going to make this call. It's going to check. Oh, there we go. So the list was updated. That means this part of the code ran. So we had this, got the people, we updated it, and we said the list is updated. That run after the first 20 seconds. Now, 30 seconds is the timeout. Oh, actually, we should make this a bigger number. Okay, so now, after the 20 seconds, we are going to get an update to this. And we're going to look at this number, 599 plus 60. So 659 will be the next timestamp for the next data that's coming back from the server. And we can even look at that. There it is. So list updated. Now, 20 seconds following this, we're going to get... Now, you'll notice we didn't update this time. We left that time. We updated the Westeros people but we never updated this time. There it is, and the time's not updated. Down here, when we created it, we updated the time, but we didn't do it here, so we need to update that time as well. This every 20 seconds is gonna to continue to update this because we never changed this time. So let's add that line in here. When we are updating it, There we go. And T is the new value that's coming from the server. So after 20 seconds, this list will be updated and this list will be updated right here. And we can actually look at the, uh, the network. This is what I was gonna show you before. When the call comes in, so right now, we got that 559 is the end. Oh, there we go, just got updated. And 944 is the new time. If we check on the network tab, here's the data coming back. And 944, that was it. Okay, so 944 plus 60 is 2004. And we are, there we are. It ran, but it didn't change the data. The list is up to date. So those names were fine. And it will continue to check every 20 seconds. It's not going to update this time until it's time to update the data. So inside here, where we know that the timestamp is too old, it's going to update both of them. If the timestamp is not too old, it just displays this message. If it's the first time the page is running, there it is. It's creating the entries for both the time and the people and writing this message about list created. So that's it. That is the basic of how you cache data in local storage. All has to do with a timestamp and this simple calculation right here. So I hope that helped you out. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.